All right, welcome to Dora Dancy, the only podcast where you can hear all the latest in television and entertainment news with too many hosts with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is. Yeah, I'm right, the third one is. Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the HBO Go to John's HBO Max to Dave's HBO Now because he is obsolete. Well, I was going to say, I think we're, we'll get into it. HBO <laughs> Go, HBO Now, they're, they're all the same. We're all in this together. Three hosts, same opinions, and three services that are all very redundant. Uh, we will be talking about HBO Max today. It's the big launch week. We're going to be looking at the service and some of the programming, including Love Life, a new show on HBO Max. And then we have a show on another streaming service, a very buzzy show starring Steve Carell called Space Force from Netflix. Wow, we got a lot to do tonight. We were off last week, a lot to catch up on. I'm a little rusty though, John. I just I just can't remember what this, this segment is that we start with. In and out points. In and out In out In out In out Yes, yes, it is. It is in and out points. Again, we were off last week, but something happened that's related to HBO Max that we need to talk about because it's been a long time that this thing has been cooking. Back in 2017, Justice League was released and was directed by Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon. Now, Snyder had to step away during production and during editing after a death in his family. Now, fans have since campaigned for the release of the Snyder Cut. Uh, I was they're hoping it will someday be released. And in March of 2019, uh, Snyder confirmed that the original cut does exist and it was up to Warner Brothers to release it. Well, that hashtag must have worked because the Snyder Cut will be released to HBO Max. It's coming to the service in 2021. It will cost 20 to $30 million to complete special effects, musical score, and editing. The cast will be returning to help complete the project, and it'll be either a four-hour film or a six-part TV miniseries. All right, Kyle, shaking your head. You don't want the release of the Snyder Cut. It doesn't seem like a, a cut. It seems like a reworking. <laughs> it doesn't seem like uh, that it just happens to be there. It sounds like uh, $30 million or whatever over <laughs> what you need to do for another cut. Yeah. What was possibly cut if it's going to be a six-part TV miniseries? <laughs> like, there is nothing left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. We have a, a possibly four-hour film or a six-part TV miniseries. Uh, John, are you excited about the Snyder cut of Justice League? I didn't see the other, the other, the original. So I didn't, <laughs> oh, you didn't see the original cut, and you don't no. see the. <laughs> no. Uh, again, I, I. Everyone knows. I think I'm not a big superhero person in general, but especially not of the DC universe. That's just not my, I just don't know what the hell is going on on the DC side of things. But yeah, Justice League was a big talked about film. Obviously, Snyder had to step away and it was Josh Whedon who finished the project. But yeah, 20 to $30 million to complete this. Maybe, because the chairman of Warner Media and head of HBO Max, Bob Greenblatt, expected to be much more it was, I'd be on the higher end of the estimate. And he said, quote, I'll just say I wish it was just 30 million and stop there. It's an enormous undertaking and very complex. It just seems crazy to do this again for what could be a mediocre thing again. And then yeah. what, what's to say that the fans aren't disappointed when this cut comes out? I mean, it seems like you're doing revisionist history on something that I don't know if the, the reward is there in the end. No, I, I don't think so either because, okay, let's say it costs 30 million to produce low end of things here. It gets released. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, are those people that signed up specifically for HBO max are now going to stay for the next month and the next yeah. month and the next year, they'll just sign up for a seven day trial. Okay. I saw it. 
it's all right. I'll rip it, put it on, you know, mm. on my whatever device I have. Yeah. I, I just think it's it's a lot of money for not much gain. It, there's just, I don't yeah, know what... yeah. It was just as you were saying that. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, there there really isn't much to go for that. Like, how many new users is this going to attract? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Superhero movies are yeah. very huge, popular, yeah. but like you said, are they going to stick around? I don't. I, I don't know. It just seems like a gamble. That's not not worth it when you already like i said this thing could be a dumpster fire and then what the fans are upset but then they realize that they can get their way so then they do this with every other film well what are they going to really i think solve anything with just editing because i mean at least right now there's not much production going on you're not going to get uh jason momoa and henry cavill and ben affleck to show up to a, a studio right now because they're not open. That's for sure. So it sounds like a lot of this 20 to 30 million is going to be for special effects, scoring and editing. So like, they're just going to take the stuff that was already shot and rework it a little bit, add a little bit of new coat of paint on it. And then it's all, Oh my God, this went from a mediocre movie now to the greatest movie of all time. It's mm. like, I don't know if it's going to make that jump yeah. just with the stuff they already shot and they the writing i mean a lot of this comes down to writing and mm-hmm. I mean, yeah it's like if the story wasn't there in the beginning what's gonna change that i mean i i don't know i don't know it's like it's like uh it's like a house with a pool in the backyard but the infrastructure is just totally <laughs> shot so it's like yeah. great that pool is awesome but we've got to figure out this electrical problem it yeah doesn't, you got it doesn't make it, yeah it doesn't make any sense to me well fans were very quick uh, to cheer on Twitter about this. They're all like, told you it exists. But technically, it doesn't exist. I mean, uh-huh. because we don't know what it is. If it exists, it would be something. But right now, it's either a four-hour movie. It's either a six-part miniseries. It clearly doesn't exist because it's not done. There might have been a, a, a timeline, a rough cut somewhere down the line, but it definitely wasn't ready to be released. But already, there's a hashtag going around, uh, quote, Hashtag release the original Snyder cut. This this user said, quote, not on HBO Max, but on 35 millimeter film reel. Not this mini series BS, but it's original <laughs> long movie form with unfinished CGI. Anything else is unacceptable. I want I want this thing to look like that mummy trailer from Tom Cruise at Universal. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh, yeah. laughs> Just those like sound effects. Yeah, that's what I want. I, that's the, that's probably the Snyder cut. He's yeah. like, well, I had to leave after after, after we uh, recorded all this stuff. Oh my god! <clears throat> I think this is this whole thing is just a slippery. You know, it's just we're just gonna go down that slope. We're just gonna keep slipping and slipping because first fans complain about that Sonic design, mm-hmm. and they spent millions and millions of dollars redoing it, and it paid off. It worked. Now they're gonna do this, and already I saw uh, David Ayer who did Suicide Squad, the first one, not the one that's shooting with James Gunn that's called The Suicide Squad, the original Suicide Squad with Margot Robbie and Will Smith and that whole gang. Mm -hmm. He's campaigning to release his cut of Suicide Squad because whatever, oh, that version was so much better than the version that came out. I just think- Does it have less of Jared Leto? (laughs) (laughs) I actually think there's more Jared Leto. I know. Yeah, there's oh man, yeah that that didn't oof. that didn't work. But I'm just hoping maybe can we at least get the the proper CGI of Henry Cavill's mustache this time of Justice League? I mean, are they going to be able to fix that? Uh, I hope the they just thirty million. I hope they just bring in uh, Henry Cavill from Mission Impossible and just <laughs> import him into <laughs> Suicide Squad. Why not? Let's do of, it. Of him doing like the machine gun arms or whatever um yeah <laughs> that was i love that i love that all right but yeah we're gonna have to wait and see 2021 a lot could happen you know a lot could happen in the world before then mm-hmm. uh, so we'll have to wait and see if hbo max will really release the snyder cut but we are talking hbo max and we have a lot to talk about i made this special uh sound clip to get us excited for the launch of HBO Max. John, let's let's start it up. 10 9 8 
Seven. What's up, Six. Yeah. Five. How are you doing? Right, HBO Max, it is finally here on May 27th. HBO Max launched, and it is the streaming service that combines HBO with all parts Warner Media. That includes Warner Brother Pictures, TBS, TNT, True TV, Cartoon Network, Turner Classic Movies, um, Crunchyroll, Adult Swim. So much on this service from Warner Media. Now, we're going to talk about some of the programming later on. I want to start off with just some of the, the cosmetics of HBO Max. We're going, to, we're going to talk the interface, the price, you know, the software, just kind of the nuts and bolts of this. And if you may even have HBO Max without you knowing. Um, let's start off with John. What did your initial thoughts of HBO Max jump out at you? Um, it was okay. Uh, I, you know, I went on to see basically one show. Um, so. It wasn't hard to find. I think the hardest part for me, which I know we'll discuss, is figuring out how to get it. Um, it seemed like <laughs> to me it was really pushing me towards the app because everything I saw on their website was, oh, get the app and log in. And I wanted to do it on my computer, and I had to actually go like look somewhere else to see if I could do it on my computer because I didn't see like a login here. I, it, was, it was weird, but besides that, the actual interface on the PC was fine. It, it worked. I searched for what I wanted and I watched it. I was say, what, what, like, was there anything you're looking forward to with this launch? Like, obviously, you watched the show we're going to talk about later, but is there anything else you watched or anything you're excited to watch on the service? No, I, I, I to be honest, not really sure what's on there. I know you just listed yeah. all the all the companies who have their have their stuff on there, but like, I didn't see anything. I was like, oh yeah, I should watch that. I haven't watched that. You know, I mean. I don't know. I, I didn't spend a lot of time searching around on it, so I, maybe I'm a bad, a bad uh, sample size. No, I mean, you're not alone. Music's in the chat. I didn't know it had all that. <laughs> There's a lot mm -hmm. to there that not many people know about. Uh, Kyle, are you looking forward to anything? What did you think of the HBO Max? I mean, I mean, I only saw what when we were scrolling through when we were looking for the show. I mean, it's very purple. <laughs> the <It> interface is. <laughs> is very purple. But... Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm excited because they have a lot of programming that I like and they're introducing like a bunch of different stuff. Like I even saw like Looney Tunes is coming back or whatever, which I love Looney Tunes as a kid. Um, so, I mean, there is programming out there, but HBO uh, with that countdown, they basically just splooged all over themselves because this thing is just, it shouldn't be this hard to yeah. find no. Or be this hard. Like, if John just wants to go and watch it on his computer, it should be like, all right, come here. We're ready for you. It shouldn't be like, wait, I've searched Google and I have to look through the facts in order to <laughs> find what how to stream this. It's insane to me. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into just the confusion because there are a lot of people are confused, even outside of podcast hosts that talk about entertainment. <laughs> I mean... Well, let's start off with the price here. $14.99 a month. That is the price of normal HBO. So if you're paying HBO now, it's the same price. So it's, yeah, it's like, you know, for me, I love the HBO programming, the movies and the shows that they have. So I'm going to get even more for my money. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. take that. Mm -hmm. uh, free stuff. Great. But mm -hmm. 1,000 U.S. consumers were surveyed by Chorus on behalf of Bloomberg. And the majority of Americans spend $15 or less on their entire streaming budget. Many mm -hmm. found it, many found HBO Max less essential than Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, and Amazon. They compared it to the $6 CBS All Access in this, mm. um, this poll. And I don't know if it's just because of what is even on this. You know, they, they see the HBO name and they're like, oh, that's the premium epics, Showtime stuff. I don't need that well, stuff. I, I don't know. I think it's also like a, like an image thing. I mean, if people, especially with cable back in the day when cable was a big, big thing, what was the first to go if you had to cut something? Yeah. It was your premium stuff. Yeah. So it might still be in their head that, you know, I, I don't really watch it to begin with, or I don't really necessarily need it. Whereas others feel like a necessity, like Netflix yeah. seems like a necessity. 
yeah. um, to people. So I think it's more like an image or like a branding thing uh, or uh, how people perceive it because as we know, HBO, any of those premium channels are the first to go if any of that stuff, if you need to cut costs. Yeah, Netflix at this point is the Kleenex, like the tissue, like instead of saying mm. tissues, it's Kleenex, like it's, yeah. it's synonymous with streaming. Mm -hmm. um, Disney Plus and Hulu, they're all kind of working together right now. They have great deals. It's, it's Disney Synergy. They're cheap. And then you got Amazon who, mm. I mean, it's tied in with something already. A lot of people just have their Amazon, you know, deliveries and their Amazon Music or whatever. It's already mm -hmm. tied into that universe. Mm -hmm. So like this is kind of its own separate thing. Yeah. And it's just the whole launch is just confusing as hell. And we're going to try to piece it together maybe to help you answer the question, do I even have HBO Max? You might have it and you don't even know it. Um, we discussed on the podcast before, and I remember we included clips from the Hollywood Reporter and their podcast and their hosts not knowing about the service and the difference between, you know, HBO Go and Now and stuff like that. I have a clip from a video that HBO released. And that's already saying a lot right there that if HBO has to release a video of like, uh, what's the difference between all this stuff? Then you have some issues like uh, that they have to solve. But let's see if we can kind of piece together from their, their video here. So what exactly is the difference between HBO Go, HBO Now and HBO Max? Let's start with the basics. This is HBO, home of the greatest shows of all time and the latest hit films. You can stream HBO Go if you get HBO through your TV or cable provider. Or you can use HBO Now to stream HBO if you don't have one. With me so far? Great. Now say hello to HBO Max. A new way to stream everything on HBO together with even more amazing shows and movies. It's where friends meet friends. And princes meet kings. And doctors meet, um, scientists? And it's where these meddling kids meet these meddling kids. It's where heroes face off against just villains. They're showing all their different shows. It's like, and all it's right, And it's this rabbit it. and this dog. Oh, and a cat bus. Plus new Max originals with something for everyone. And this and that and so much more. All together in one incredible place. So if you want HBO, you can stream HBO Go with your TV or cable provider. Or HBO Now if you don't have one. And if you want all of HBO together with a collection of even more of the best TV and movies for just $14.99 a month, then HBO Max is for you. And now you know the difference. All right. Do you guys now know the difference? <laughs> no. No. I mean, I mean, sure. This is a uh, it was a video on a audio podcast, but I, I don't think they did a good job explaining it because from what I pieced together. And I'm going to go through it here. HBO Go is if you get HBO through a cable TV package. And then you use that login to watch HBO's content. HBO Now is if you get your HBO through a separate subscription. Maybe like Apple. You buy through the Apple App Store. Then you get a login to watch their on-demand content. But already that's redundant. And I get it. Oh, it's two different things here. Oh, this is for the cable TV. We, why do we need two streaming yeah, services? For, yeah. It's the same mm -hmm. programming. It's the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if that wasn't redundant enough, now let's add an HBO Max, which is HBO on top of the Warner Media stuff, but it costs the same as HBO Now. So why, why do... What? Why, why HBO you? Now? Yeah, why HBO Now? Just convert HBO Now to HBO Max... And then you can have the two, yeah. I guess, with HBO Go is your, your with your cable provider. Yeah. yeah, because already on the day of the launch, my HBO Now app automatically changed to HBO Max. So why did it do that? I didn't sign up for HBO Max. You just automatically made my HBO Now HBO Max because, again, it's the same price. So then you're saying your HBO Now is redundant. It's it's very confusing, and for you know we're in the entertainment kind of bubble here. I can't even imagine other people trying to figure out this and what they're getting and what they're not getting, because it's like, okay, if I sign up for HBO now and H I don't get the stuff of HBO Max, but then why are they the same price? Mm -hmm. It's 
Yeah, that's what doesn't make any sense to me. If they're the same price, why is does it have something to do with the deals? with yeah. like streaming and I, I don't, I don't know. It could be something with the deals of the different providers here. Cause we're going to go through them and kind of break some of it down and it can get really confusing how you're getting some of your HBO and if you qualify for max, but it's like, if you can sign up for HBO max, because you know, yeah. at some point, maybe, maybe the only thing I could see is maybe sometime down the line, HBO max will jack up their price. Yeah. That's what and I'm And then thinking. HBO now will be the 15 and yeah. HBO Max was this is, twenty. This is but, like an introductory price yeah. or whatever. That's the only thing I could think of because if not, it's like if you're automatically updating my own app of HBO Now, you're saying to yourself, HBO Now is the same as HBO Max. It's the same thing because I yeah. didn't sign up for it. I didn't pay extra. It automatically did it. So, mm. but yeah, there's there's numerous articles trying to explain this to people. And I have this one that's going to be scrolling on the podcast here because it's, it's just so confusing because they have all these different sections of if you have HBO through an app subscription and a cable company, you will get HBO Max. But if you have it TV through AT&T, it really depends on your plan. And I'm just going to say all this mumbo jumbo to just show how confusing it is because DirecTV Premier, DirecTV Low Maximo, and Uverse U400, U450, and AT&T Now Max get max at no additional charge but at&t tv choice extra ultimate optimo mass get a free year but you don't get a free trial if you have at&t you verse you family you basic uh that's a funny one at&t tv now plus etc cetera, etc cetera. well i think the problem there is that's way too many cable packages yeah. <laughs> I think that's uh, yeah. first and foremost the biggest problem, and that's not even all of them. <laughs> like, yeah, so I think that is the that probably is the problem is they have this deal and then they provide a bunch of cable packages, but then they don't want <laughs> these people that only pay like forty bucks or whatever for the cable to like get this extra. It's just insane to me. It seems like you would. Uh, I don't know. It's just wild. Hmm. I don't know how, I don't know with that many different packages. I don't know how you bring this in unless you just keep it a separate entity. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, certain groups are getting free trials. Other groups are getting a year. Other groups are just getting it for free. It's, it's too confusing for the consumer and probably confusing for the workers. If we're going to be honest, like mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't have that memorized. Um, but two groups that really angered the internet that, they're, they don't have HBO Max right now, is Roku and Amazon. Um, they've yet to reach a deal with Roku and Amazon as of this recording. This means that even if you have HBO Go or HBO Now on any of your HBO subscriptions through Roku or Amazon, while it was upgraded to Max, you can't watch Max through those uh, mm. providers. You can't go on your Roku TV. You can't go on your Amazon Fire Stick. To watch HBO Max, you would have to probably log in to your computer or your smartphone to watch Max there. You can't watch it on your TV. And now Roku is the number one streaming platform in the United States and has more than 40 million households. That's not wow. great for your launch day to yeah. not have some of the biggest players in streaming. I wonder what, what the hang up is with that. That's a strange one to me. I think it seems like you would get money, it. I guess. Yeah, it seems like you'd get that done. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just way too too much going on. They gotta simplify it and make it. the The thing is, is you should never have a consumer asking, "How do I get my product?" Yeah, it should they're, be. They're that willing simple. to give you the money to watch the product. They just don't know who to give the money to at this point. Yeah, it's wild. It's just it shouldn't be this hard for anyone to try and get this thing, especially when you're making a launch. Yeah. And it seems like this would have come up in some kind of board yeah. meeting. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't have them if everyone's home. There wasn't a Zoom board meeting no. to discuss this. <laughs> um, I mean, Amazon did have a nice little jab at Warner Media and the parent company AT&T uh, because of this. They said, quote, with a seamless customer experience, nearly 5 million HBO streamers currently access their subscription through Amazon's Prime video channels. 
Unfortunately, with the launch of HBO Max, AT&T is choosing to deny these loyal HBO customers access to the expanded catalog. We believe that if you're paying for HBO, you're entitled to the new programming though through the method that you're already using. That's just good customer service and that's a priority for us. So yeah, uh, we'll have to see if any of these ones cave, maybe eventually, because yeah, you want Roku and Amazon mm -hmm. showing your product. I mean, if it's the number one and possibly number two <laughs> yeah. services, but um, yeah, I don't know. So if that I, wasn't confusing enough. Yeah, <laughs> uh, also having worked in voiceover, just uh, hearing that girl's vocal <laughs> fry. Oh my God. <laughs> oh God. Mm. Well, um, let's see here. She was going through a lot of the programming. You couldn't see it, but uh, I don't know if it matters because people are very confused of what's actually on it. That's our last bit of confusion here. Morning Consult and Hollywood Reporter had a survey of about 2,200 adults and only 13% knew that Friends, the one they spent millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars on, was going to be on the service. 24% uh, knew that Game of Thrones would be on HBO Max. Um, Wait, what? Only 24%? Yeah. Only 24% knew Game of Thrones would be on HBO Max. Uh, 13% Probably because they were friends. all bit torn, like well, they're streaming. That. It's possible. Yeah. I mean, but you would, because that's not good if already the customers don't know what is, because I mean, sure, HBO Max, I you can assume it has HBO content, but I, I'm right there with them. Why would you think Friends is on HBO Max? It's an yeah. NBC show. You know, sure, it was done by Warner Brothers, but are they Warner Brothers? Where's that in the HBO Max name? Mm -hmm. They don't know that. Like, it, it seems like, I mean, uh, forgive me if I just haven't seen it or anything, but it seems like we talked about Friends being like one of the most streamed things. It, be, it seemed like that would be something that you would put in that you your have on your, yeah. on your site. Yeah. You, you would think. Um, it's funny, though. They, they People still knew what wasn't on HBO Max, though. 95% knew that The Mandalorian wouldn't be there. And 91% knew Stranger Things would not be there. So it's, if people know what's not on it. Yeah. Just, they don't know what is on it. Oh, and God. that may have affected the mobile downloads. Um, HBO Max had 87 mo or 87,000 mo uh, downloads on day one which is short of the 300,000 that Quibi had on their first day. Uh, we have to keep things in perspective here because that does not include the subscribers like me that probably got their HBO yeah. Now yeah. upgraded to HBO Max. And also Quibi did have a three-month free trial. Yeah. So there's that. But still, not a, not a, I don't feel like a, a great launch uh, for HBO Max. Um, especially when disney plus seems like a game changer for yeah. disney and this just seems like it should be not, maybe not at that level but still like you're highlighting all the programming for your one entity yeah. and you can't get it done well a lot of people where i saw like immediately the day one they're like well, wait a minute i thought i was gonna get all of cartoon network here and it's missing this show this show this show this show this show it's like so there was a lot of stuff missing, whether that was like deals, you know, I did see that they had, um, you know, the day of they, they got the Harry Potter movies back, which, which those were in license, I believe, with NBC Universal. Mm. So they, that was a surprise day one. But a lot of people were like, but you told me all this stuff was going to be there. And I remember the launch of Disney Plus. Everyone was excited where it's like, oh, every episode of Even Stevens and Lizzie McGuire and all the, the classic 60s and 70s Disney movies, they had everything on launch day, mm -hmm. which was huge. But like here, it's like, well, we got most of it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get the rest later. But it's just like, well, yeah, people want that now, especially for a $15 price tag. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it seems like people would have this talk in some kind of meeting and i don't know i don't know whether it was like the ship was yeah, sailing was and they're like all day. right well, well it is what it is yeah um we will say compare it to peacock which is going to be launching in july um i bet many people thought friends which aired on nbc would be on the nbc streaming service peacock uh back in march there was another morning consult in hollywood reporter poll and about 16% said they would be very or somewhat likely 
to buy HBO Max, which was more than Peacock and Quibi, which had 10% each. So 16% isn't great, uh, but it is better than 10% of yeah. Peacock. Uh, Peacock will launch. I, I, that just sounds crazy. I keep saying it. It feels like it's a joke, Peacock. But <laughs> Peacock will launch with a $5 ad version and then a $10 ad free version in July. So I'm sure we'll talk about Peacock when it comes around in July, but it's already too many. It's too many. Too many. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Yeah, pretty um, much. Let's see here. Uh, I will say it was a pretty weak, though, opening list of the HBO Max originals, I thought. Uh, and I looked ahead for the first month when planning the podcast. There's not much there. There's a lot of reality. There's a lot of stuff for kids. Uh, I saw there was Craftopia, like a kids crafting competition show. They had Legendary, which is a kind of fashion competition show. Uh, the Not Too Late Show with Elmo, which is a obviously something with Elmo. Um, <laughs> but then they had this other show. Uh, pretty much their one kind of scripted show for adults. And we're going to talk about it tonight here. We're going to go back. So send us back, guys. Back in time. I'm back, baby. Maybe a smidge early, but not bad. Yeah, it felt early. Mm -hmm. It did feel early. All right, here. Love Life, the series premiere. Let's see. It's uh, debuted with the launch of HBO Max on May 27th. This anthology series follows a different person each season as they go from their first to last romance this season we will follow darby carter who's played by anna kendrick all right we all saw this first episode let's start off with kyle though what did you think of love life uh i was actually pleasantly surprised by this um i mean i it, it's definitely into like rom commy territory but it's feel good in a way um it's uh decent with the dialogue with how uh, i mean couples talk in relationships even though i didn't really relate to the guy too much but you could sense that uh i mean you could sense the relationship there so i think they did a good job with the relationships between darby and that dude she was with and then also the the other girls in the apartment um uh so i like that in the sense it it is a feel good thing it I don't know. It, it's like rom-com territory, yeah. but um, uh, I forgot what else I was going to say, mm. but I'll, it'll come back up. All right. we'll, we'll go someone else. <laughs> All right. I will say, I will say uh, I'm agreeing with you there of the dialogue and I think the cast overall, I feel like, you know, I like the, the cast and I found them a little bit more relatable than, you know, let's compare it to another New York city uh, show about love uh, girls from HBO. Mm. Uh, mm. the original HBO. Um, mm. Maybe it's just like a different generation thing. I, you know, H Hannah in the, the first episode of Girls is like, I'm the voice of a generation or whatever, you know, she was saying mm. there. And maybe it's just the different generation, even though I feel like she's our age, but whatever. Yeah. Because um, I never really fully related to that group. Um, but I feel like I was more with this group. And I, I we did watch it with a millennial woman. <laughs> and she found it very, very relatable. So, mm -hmm. you know, even some of the stuff that we we're like, really? It's just like, no, this is real. This is real. So, <laughs> you know, I got, we got, we got to throw that opinion in there. Let's start mm -hmm. off with, let's go with uh, John though. What did you think of Love Life? Um, I think I, I, I agree with Kyle. I, I felt not relatable to it, but it felt like it was more natural than other things I've seen. You know, it, I can kind of believe the idea of somebody having, the types of troubles that she was having. So, yeah. And it's going to be an interesting setup for the show. I mean, each episode will be a different relationship and each season will be a new protagonist. Mm -hmm. This first one, we have Augie. Uh, so we see that relationship and then each episode will be a different relationship for Darby mm -hmm. until I'm assuming eventually, hopefully it ends happily ever after yeah. for her. But I mean, who knows for sure? Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, what do I you was, think of uh, Augie? Do you have an opinion on Augie or some of the guys uh, she's going to be seeing uh, maybe this season? 
uh well i didn't relate i just thought he was corny as hell i just thought he was like a cornball but i mean everybody's different but i mean the things that they were going through like him leaving to go somewhere else i mean that that kind of dialogue is like oh you have to be like you're fake happy because you're but you're really upset like all those things are natural feelings and i thought they um caught that really well um but i am interested to see how the rest of the season works out uh we, i forgot to mention they have scoop mcnary in there yeah. and i'm excited to see because i'm really big fan of his so um yeah it'll be interesting to see this kind of evolution that they that they choose for this character and i like that the seasons will be different um because that's one of my concerns is like because they show uh spoiler alert but they show her at the end where she's pregnant and i'm like this could be the thing where like are they writing themselves into a trap kind of like how i met your mother where it's like where is this thing going but if there, there's a definitive end um happening uh then it's it seems like a more enjoyable experience to watch yeah what, what is interesting you bring up scoop mcneary here uh let's see each episode looks like it's going to be named after somebody uh, who they're possibly the re- relationship is about. I guess spoiler for episode two, the name is Bradley Field, and that is the name of Scoot McNeary's character, Uh-oh. which we went to the wedding of in the first episode. So. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Um, yep, 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 yep. But I... Uh, I was gonna say some of these some of these guys though, because uh, I think we were talking during it, Kyle, and we compared it back to girls again. And I feel like a lot of these shows have two types of guys. You have guys that are the, the perfect cornballs that are auggy, and then you have yeah. like the real dicks. Like we yeah. have some real <laughs> Yeah. I mean, because like, like... girls, you had like Adam Driver, uh-huh. it's not a great guy on yeah. that show. Uh-huh. And then you have like old man Ray. <laughs> it's just like yeah. there's no in between really <laughs> yeah there really is no in between it's like very polarizing uh characters for guys it's like and i mentioned this to you it's like every guy is either a dick or just yeah. just total yeah cornball it's there's like no in between it was like what's going on here i don't know i don't know i say it, it re- but yeah we were talking the rom-coms it did remind me a little bit of the 500 days of summer mm, mm-hmm. especially with the narration in the beginning we, we mm-hmm. get these like stats in the beginning i want to go a little bit into these stats uh, i want to break them down a little bit here okay. uh, the narrator says quote our love lives can quite easily be reduced to data for instance by the time the average person ends up with the love of their life they will have been in seven relationships of those two are often long-term relationships All the rest are a mix of short-term flings, casual dating, and one-night stands. The average person will fall in love two times, and they will have their heart broken twice as well. Now, uh, I I saw this one uh, post uh, in the New York Times, and the creator was actually talking about how people like to latch on to stats and quotes, and that's probably why he did this in the opening here. He said, quote, the data gives structure to the show and makes her journey a case study. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading this article because the article starts off with this headline that, like, we will assess these stats. But they never do. They never do. (laughs) Instead, they do link to a Glamour article that links to a paywall uh, study, like a study that's behind a paywall. I'm not paying for that. So we're going to go off the Glamour article (laughs) that links to it. (laughs) I'm not paying for that here. So I have some data here about what they found with the average relationships and love life is. But what do you think about this here? Uh, at least from the show seven relationships two are often long term and they will fall in love twice with their heart broken twice as well that all sounds well, all right i mean i don't know everyone's different man i don't know do, uh, do you want me to confess my my yeah. the i want to know every single person the... that you uh, go yeah <laughs> Yeah, Let's, just like I'm yelling. Who's your up, first kiss, Kyle? Uh, I want names, know. and it's just like bleep, bleep, bleep <laughs> over every name. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, who knows, dude? I mean, there, I'm sure there's like high school sweethearts and stuff, but then I'm sure there's. Uh, but it's great. So they're putting the. This is gonna make me sound like Uh-oh. an a hole. No, they're putting the one night stands in the seven thing. No, um, actually, yeah, I think they are. Wow. Yeah. It, of those two are often long-term relationships while the rest are a mix of short-term flings 
casual dating in oh, one okay. night stands. Wow. But so, yeah, it's like, yeah, I it mean, only allows I'm... for five short term flings dating <laughs> not one night stands. That's it. Yeah. Of yeah. The seven. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't know what the, the, we got to ask Dr. Ruth. Isn't she the sex <laughs> expert or whatever? Right. Well, <laughs> no. we, we could ask glamour. Glamour here says the average woman. All right. The average woman average, sure. uh, kisses 15 men, two long-term relationships, two heartbreaks, four one-night stands, and seven sexual partners. So it okay. kind of matches yeah, it does what they're match. saying there. Two long-term yeah. relationships, two heartbreaks, four one-night stands. So I guess if you put that in the two long-term relationships, you get six, seven sexual partners. Uh, I don't know how some of this doesn't exactly <laughs> add up. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing math on the on live yeah. oh my god dude that was hilarious it's yeah. like not adding up you're like wait trying to account for something i was gonna say wait a minute there. here uh <laughs> does herself count like <laughs> that's what it felt like you were doing <laughs> let's look at the men the average man they also mentioned this in the article oh, here Oh god easy already kyle all right <laughs> average man 10 sexual partners and six one night stands and they have some other stuff but it was too confusing but that's the main thing of here too confusing what does that mean they're like i mean i simplified this here i'll send you the glamour article here it's written <laughs> as it's like do. it's like, <laughs> like two of these one of those three of this four of this it's just like <laughs> there's a lot like going you're on. ordering off a mcdonald's menu what is what is this but yeah, so it looks like more sexual partners for men and just a couple extra one night stands as well. But uh, I don't know. We're going to have to maybe wait for season two of Love Life to see if those numbers <laughs> add up. Yeah, <laughs> they'll have to resurvey. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we surveyed over a bunch. Um, let's see here. We checked the penthouse forums and they <laughs> say all right all right i regret bringing it even up on the podcast uh, let's look i got a couple of nitpicks a couple of things about the show um i will say uh i hate when shows kind of retroactively talk about history and they do mm. the thing of like quote imagine if romney's effing president world will come to an end oh yeah that was so eye-rolling it's Ugh. like all right like yeah we get it we get it you know mm. and um and then there's always the stuff where i've seen it a bunch I've talked to you, Kyle, about it. I don't believe it. But the rules about texting and how long to wait, I find that's just the stupidest, like, first of all, I've seen it a bunch of times in, in shows. Yep. It feels so played out. But also, yeah. I just don't agree with it at all. Like, well, yeah. oh, oh, it's been two days and 23 hours. I got to <laughs> wait another hour before I, it's like, who cares? <laughs> just text. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, well, you can't be too available now. Mm -hmm. If you're too available, it's uh, this whole thing. It's just insane. Mm. It's just insane. I, I mean, I don't know. All right. But I mean, I guess I'm going to have to ask you, are you guys interested in checking out more of Love Life? Because uh, they do set up a bit of extra things here at the end uh, with with a possible pregnancy, as, as we alluded to. Mm. Uh, John, are you going to check out more? Uh, so I watched three episodes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, and it's not really a spoiler, but that pregnancy, like, it's barely brought up at all mm. in the other two episodes. It's like, there's, like, it's nothing to that so maybe finale. It's an episode it's, it's, it's 10 finished. thing. It's probably, I, like, a finale maybe, thing. Finale, maybe, yeah. but it, it barely is a dent in the rest of the show. So mm. I don't know if they just didn't include it as a, you know, oh, we're focusing on somebody else now. Or, you know, like, I, I, I honestly don't know what for, the point of that was it's, it's the cliffhanger for, to get you to watch the yeah, next yeah, yeah. episode the next episode for, for a second i was like the way you were saying it, you're yeah. like it's not even and i was like a thing like did you get hit by a car and like lose no. it or something? No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god but this schedule will actually be accelerated a bit here initially they dropped those three episodes they dropped those at once on launch day mm -hmm. there's going to be week to week but mm -hmm. now they are moving it up and it's going to be uh episodes four through six probably this week and then the final four a week after that so wow. it's gonna be over three weeks you got the 10 episodes there mm. you can check them all out kyle are you gonna check them out 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a feel good. Yeah, it's a feel good show. I, I it's not like revolutionizing anything, but it's, re- yeah, it's uh, I think it's relatable yeah. in dialogue if you're in, have ever been in a long term relationship or a relationship of any kind, or know the struggles. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we crunched the numbers and we, we know the struggles, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It, it, it's, it's a fun, light, easy show. It, yeah, check it out. It's, yeah. Our next show, though, uh, Space Force. Uh, it's the series premiere, The Launch. We talked about the launch of HBO Max. It's also the launch of Space Force. Uh, dropped all the episodes on May 29th on Netflix. This workplace comedy is from the office developer Greg Daniels and centers on a group of people tasked with establishing the sixth branch of the United States Air Force uh, or Armed Forces. Uh, Steve Carell plays the general in charge of that effort of creating the U.S. Space Force. All right, here we go. John, what did you think of the premiere of Space Force? Um. It was okay. I didn't think it really grabbed me. Um, uh, being interested in space, there were a lot of things where I was kind of like, eh, it doesn't really work that way. Like, uh, uh, a little bit of spoilers for the episode. There's a satellite that comes in and interfaces with another one of their satellites, and it just kind of like pulls up and parks next to it and then flies away. And it's like, that's not really how it is. They're not even close to how it works. And there's weird things like that. I mean, it, I get it from like a point of view where it's a plot device yeah most people aren't really like that in tune with it but it was small things like that that kind of made me be like eh. um other than that it, it, it was okay no, the, no, nobody really popped out as me uh, uh, out to me as a like oh i love that character you know this is my favorite character blah blah, blah. it was just kind of like eh. yeah no i i get you and it's funny you bring up the kind of their tech and their their space education here because i watched actually two episodes and i feel like in both the episodes there's so much like mumbo jumbo that they're just like spouting and i'm like waiting for it to be a joke but it's like they're trying to almost give us technical information but Mm. it's also not true and it's a comedy like it's just it's like a weird like science lesson but mixed with comedy it's 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 just a weird tone of the whole show but you know going into this it's you have the team and you're like okay greg daniels the office Parks and Rec. He's back with Steve Carell. They're back together. And then you have this ensemble. And the the list of people on Wikipedia is huge. John Malkovich, Ben Schwartz, Jimmy Yang, Noah Emmerich, Fred Willard, Lisa Kudrow, Roy Wood Jr., Jane Lynch, Patrick Warburton, Caitlin Olson. It goes on and on and on. They got everyone in this. So with all that being said, with that talent behind and in front of the camera, this should have been a lot a lot, a lot funnier than what we saw. Kyle, what did you think of the premiere of Space Force? Yeah, no, I don't like this. I don't like this show. It seems corny as hell. I know I've been using that word a lot, so maybe that's corny in and of itself. <laughs> but it's just the jokes did not land at all. And when there were jokes, it was like, is this supposed to be intentionally like campy? Like, even if it is, it's not good in a campy way. It just, the, the one joke that I can't believe that they did, it just felt like I a seen it before and B like they would go to that level is like, uh, when the doctor and Steve Carell's character are just sitting around and they're like, Oh, we had to take the caps off the off the buttons for the launch, and then Steve Carell like props up his leg and, of course, hits the button. And the ca- it's like, really? Did we- what? That's a joke we use. Like that's what we came up with. And that's CGI- what we came up with. And the CGI to pay off that joke probably wasn't I cheap. Know. <laughs> it's just I this. Nah, it did not work for me. It did not. Uh, like the care, like Steve Carell's character, what is he doing? It just feels forced. Um, I love Ben Schwartz, but what Lisa Kudrow, they're not doing anything with her. She's just there and she's awesomely talented. So I don't know. The first episode to me was not good, but 
if I'm basing it just on that, I don't want to watch anymore. It's just yeah. not that good. I, I went to watch the second episode because maybe I'm like, okay, the first episode, you got to give them, they're setting up the world. Give it, you know, give them a break. Second episode didn't do anything extra for me. I was, I was just like, I kept scrolling. How much more do I got of this episode? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause these episodes are long they're over 30 minutes, mm -hmm. which is a lot for a comedy when you're used to like the 22 minute episodes of the office. Um, we're going to break down a lot of maybe how we can maybe fix this show, some of the tone of it. But I mean, I think one of the issues is, is I was watch, watching this interview with uh, Corell with Stephen Colbert and pretty much they based the entire pitch, what they sold to Netflix on the name Space Force. So this is a perfect example of the cart before the horse. They have, they have, oh, Space Force. That sounds great. That sounds funny. What's your show? Like, mm -hmm. they, just because Trump said this and is, oh, that's a funny thing. That doesn't mean you have, you know, comedy just already in that name. Yeah. You have to do other things to it. Yeah. And I don't know if they know what this show is because like, what's the tone? Is Carell's character good at his job? Bad at his job? Like, we almost need to see kind of the office style of like, maybe a group struggling to make this insane idea work. Mm -hmm. these, these people that are just like, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Like just kind of yeah. going through the motion of things and you need like, you know, it would be really funny. I think to see them starting the space force and recruiting people to this idea. Instead, we skip all of that. And we, we flash forward a whole year. It's like, I want to see the struggle. I want to see them, you know, the underdogs, the misfits kind of starting this branch. Cause like, you know, I want to compare it to Veep real quick. Like the early seasons of Veep, they made like the vice president job sound just such like a joke. Like this is just, you know, pointless. And mm -hmm. that's what I think they need this here, but they're said they're making it bigger than it is. Yeah. And it can't find the tone. And like when we're dealing with a world that we are today, speaking of Veep, we need to go further in. The, v the final season of Veep was tough because you're living in this crazy America that we're in right now with the current president. So all of his like absurd mistakes, you know, back in the day, especially not now, let's not talk about those absurd mistakes, but the ones back in the day, those were mm -hmm. quaint little, like all the stuff that Veep was doing, like, oh, the big deal. That's like, you know, a Tuesday morning for Trump. Yeah. And like the actual logo of Space Force in real life is an exact copy of the Star Trek logo. And already that's just so absurd and hilarious. And you can't write this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you do, you have to go much more yeah. absurd. And right now we're not at that level yet because if real life is funnier than a show making fun of that, it's, it just doesn't work. Yeah. 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 I can, yeah, I completely agree with you there. It's, it just, uh, yeah, it fails to, to reach that level because to me it was hard to tell how they were going like especially the the back and forth with like the different branches of the government that should have been something that was like worked and was way funnier and it just fell completely flat there was nothing there and you have like some prime time stars there it's just yeah. insane to me that it doesn't work you can't you can't just <laughs> it reminded me of the snl um cold open sketches where they're just like repeating back the news. Yeah. And it's like, just because you repeat something back doesn't make it funnier. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make it funny. You're just, you have to bring something else to the table. I don't know. Yeah. You, you like, because most of America right now, you know, is just this joke. Like, you have to go above that. You have to mm -hmm. go 10 times as much to mm -hmm. make it funny, to make it a parody on SNL or on Veep or on this it's just you can't stay at this safe line anymore because the world is just crazy it's just and there's so much of steve carell especially in that first episode you got this great ensemble but instead we get a 36 minute a story without any side plots it's just it's just mm -hmm. steve carell's character of mm -hmm. general mark um Nerd. Nerd. Yeah. and I got so many questions with him. What is that voice to start off? I, I know. I know. It's so, it's so put on. And like, I, it seems like they're trying to do like that campy stuff, but it just feels, it feels so forced. It feels yeah. forced. 
it's like um, at some points like when he's yelling it sounds like he's whispering Mm -hmm. it just sounds like a voice like michael scott i mean we've talked about steve carell he has a tough situation just with other roles because michael scott is so baked in to him that when we see him yelling i remember we talked about the morning show when we saw him yelling on the morning show it sounded like Steve Carell, you know, yelling, no, no, no. Yeah. Same with any of his dramatic performances. All you can hear is, you know, loud noises. Like it's, yeah. it's so baked in the <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. It's yeah. just, you hear that. So it's kind of hard. I know he wants to differentiate his voice. You got to find something better than what he's doing now. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's, it's just not working. Cause I don't know, like, again, is he good at his job? Is he bad at his job? I just I can't tell. I can't tell yet in two episodes. Like mm-hmm. who we like, should we care? We, what are we rooting for? I don't it's just yeah. I don't know. Um but yeah, yeah. It, it feel it just feels everything about at least the first episode just felt forced. Steve Carell's character feels forced. This make believe um uh are a military branch fighting seems forced the space forced yeah <laughs> the, oh my god yeah pretty much yeah yeah the whole thing movie? with john malkovich's character seems yeah. forced it's just uh i don't know it just doesn't work for me nothing here works for me and the jokes aren't there if like i could forgive the character of steve carell if the other jokes are there yeah but when you have something like we had to take the caps off the buttons, right. point, oh my gosh, uh, you know, it's just yeah. it's off, so off ridiculous. A three minute sequence of him dancing to Kokomo from Beach Boys. It's yeah. like, okay, why not? That, I feel like that's one of those things where they're in the writer's room and it's like, this is going to be hilarious. Like yeah. Steve doing this, it's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be one of those At 2 viral. AM, it, it's there. They think it's the funniest idea yeah. in the world, and it just reminds me of like Paul Rudd and I, I want. I think it's Wanderlust when he's just talking to himself in the mirror and just like yelling at himself. But that's funny. But this just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they do. They do set up a lot that they're gonna maybe pay off. We got China destroying the satellites, which John mentioned. Somehow they could see it with crystal clear clarity with a telescope on their front porch um but then we have this other storyline which who knows if they're going to pay off why is lisa kudrow in prison it's like okay yeah so that's yeah. random it's like i guess because yeah she's not signed on for all 10 episodes you can't pay the cast to be there every single week so <laughs> we're in prison why not yeah yeah um i don't know um i got nick rojas uh, Ro- uh boil and rojas podcast at rojo 36 uh, he's sent in a tweet about his review. He's enjoying Steve Carell in a comedic role, and John Malkovich is great. I just can't help but feel like a lot of the comedy is, pardon the pun, forced at times. Yep. I hate to finish it though. So exactly, exactly. Right there with you. Yeah, he's feeling he's feeling the force. I will say of of the ensemble, I love Ben Ben Schwartz. I uh, do just, too. But like, I feel like he's kind of doing what he's yes. does. Yes, of course. I out of the castle, I I like John Malkovich like just doing something a little different obviously it is right now in the beginning kind of cliched still but mm-hmm. i i of all of all the characters in the ensemble i would see a little bit more of malkovich but mm-hmm. yeah well he's a great actor so. yeah malkovich 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 um if you've seen that movie being john malkovich you guys know no no not yet. yeah i recommend that one that one's a trip okay. but yeah uh so i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna be watching anymore i would have been You'd have called me crazy a year ago when they announced this. I would, of course, would have watched the show with yeah. Ben Schwartz and Steve yeah. Carell and Jimmy Yang. There's just so many comedy mm-hmm. people in this. It's just there's no comedy for me there. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame, man. It's a shame. I really wanted to like this, but it's just not working for me. Well, all right, no comedy there. But next week we do have some comedy. We'll see if it holds up 20 years later. <laughs> We're going to talk about the 20th anniversary of Road Trip. Yeah, baby. There's many no movies way this, this movie holds up <laughs> whatsoever, but I'm going to love the ride. There's no way it holds up, but we're going to try to break it all down. You know, there's not many movies coming out. Uh, definitely none in theaters. We do have 
another movie at the week after that uh spike lee's the five bloods because that's coming out on netflix but until then we're just gonna watch old movies because <laughs> mm-hmm. that's all we got mm-hmm. uh so road trip next week make sure you tell us your thoughts on facebook and on twitter at do redundancy and you can find episodes of the podcast on youtube itunes spotify the blog do redundancy.com and of course we're live tuesday nights on twitch you can join us at 8 p.m usually uh twitch.tv slash do redundancy you can join us in the chat as we discuss whatever we're talking about, like Road Trip next week. Uh, I want to thank both of you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, John, getting this episode up on iTunes. Couldn't do it without you guys. Sure. All right. Until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm John Berwick. And I'm Cobbridger. And that's all we got for Do Redundancy. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>